It's like seeing people answering questions is the best type of yeah. Best type of workshop. Same. Cool. Awesome. Welcome everybody. We'll give people a little bit of time to, to find their way here. Um, but, uh, yeah, we are going to share with you how we're using audio in our businesses and our users are and how they're using audio in their businesses and how they're making money off of private podcasts. Um, hopefully, um, sorry, I'm like letting people in. We obviously have some feedback. So yeah, if you could please mute, I'm going to manually mute some folks as we go through, but yeah, we want this to be super interactive. Um, we'll walk through, you know, how to best use, uh, the time that we have together today. We definitely have like a Q and a slash coaching at the end of this. Cause usually there are a lot of questions. Cause this is kind of a, uh, unique thing to be doing in the online space right now is selling private podcasts. Um, and so we want to be able to help you guys do that well. So welcome, um, I am Lindsay Padilla. I'm one of the co-founders of Hello Audio. I'm joined by Nora, another co-founder. Hi, Nora. Hello. And Derek. Thank you. <laughs> and Derek, too. Um, Derek, I don't think I have a slide for you. So Derek will be um, sharing some stuff That's with us fine. at the end, but I did not give him an intro slide. I like thought it actually this morning, but um, I'll allow it. yeah, cool. Awesome. Okay. So yeah, if everyone could drop in the chat, maybe where they're tuning in from, that would be cool. And in hello audio fashion, just a heads up, we will be dropping this in our audio feed as well. So for those of you who aren't here live and you're listening, um, yes, that's what we love. Yeah. <laughs> those who want to re-listen after today, you know, usually I go to live things and I get distracted. So you might miss a section or something and need to listen back, but we will put this in our, uh, podcast feed, um, as well. So cool. Um, any, yeah. So we, we have two podcast feeds that we run at hello audio. Um, we have a coaching call public pod or private podcast, which is different than our workshop private podcast. So this workshop is, you know, we're teaching something, um, and people from our community, uh, can show up and, and learn some content. And then the coaching calls, you guys come with questions and we kind of help you. It's a little mix. We're going to have some coaching at the end, but if you're looking for our coaching call, that was two weeks ago, that is a different, uh, private podcast feed that replay. We don't host the videos anywhere. Um, I don't know. Cause I don't, we like audio. <laughs> we are an audio first company. No, I mean, if there are videos that are necessary and there's a lot of like walkthroughs, I mean, obviously we'll record videos. Um, but, uh, this kind of stuff is, is pretty audio heavy. So, um, that's where we put them. Cool. The coaching feed. Yeah. Usually the best thing. So for those of you who are new to the hello audio world, um, the best place to kind of, uh, stay on top of what's going on is the newsletter, which sends out every Monday. Um, so some of you maybe ended up here via Facebook ads or Instagram ads, and you, you possibly got the first newsletter on Monday if you signed up over the weekend. So, um, that is really where we have the most recent stuff going on, the events, links out to subscribe to stuff. Um, uh, you know, all the latest things that are happening. Um, I can pull that link. I can find that link for those of you who want to, to subscribe and get that in your, in your podcast players. Um, uh, once we kind of get going cool. Love okay. It. I love seeing where everyone's from. I know Texas, hey. you, some of you are getting some weather. <laughs> so, Oh yeah. I'm Texas is like really cold right now. <laughs> yeah. We got a London. I will be in London soon. I'm going to be coming to visit. That'll be cool. And Palm Springs sounds absolutely amazing. Cause it's like, I don't even know how cold it is outside in my house, but that sounds pretty awesome. <laughs> I see winter wonderland in Austin. Yeah. I've, I have yes. a lot of friends there. I've been seeing it on Instagram. Cool. Sacramento. Hey, we used to be NorCal. I used to teach in, um, oh gosh, Fairfield, uh, Fairfield community college or sorry. What was my college called? Solano. Solano, <laughs> Solano was the Where county. Fairfield was the city. I'm great. I'm, I know things that's by Sacramento. <laughs> cool. Off the 80. Yes, All right, yes. friends. Okay. So I think, I, hello. Yeah. I just said it was an hour away. That's all. Sorry. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Not important. Very cool. <laughs> I love it. Okay. I love it. Okay, cool. So, um, yeah, I think we've given ample time for folks to show up live. Yep. 
Um, yeah, so let's dive in. So and mind everything can everyone can see kind of the slides and everything. Let me make sure I can switch things forward. Yeah, yeah make sure you got that. One thing I will say, yeah. um, because this, there's no hard pitch at the end of this. So oh, yeah. like for those of you that sign up for these things, they're like, they're gonna sell me. Like it's gonna be like a 997 course. Like there's nope. none of that. Um, we're really here. <laughs> like, so just kind of like let's put that like rest easy. That's not happening here. Um, we really do want to just talk about like we've seen the numbers, we've seen. Um, amazing. If you're already a Hello Audio user, then that's awesome. We're so glad you're here. I know that I see many familiar faces and names, so that's fantastic. Um, really, we're, as more and more users are sharing their success stories with us, we are seeing the data come through and just how amazing private podcasts are transforming results for businesses in lots of different ways. So we're just really here to share that with you today. So just wanted to put your mind at ease if that's something you're worried about. I'm just really, we're really excited to share this with you. Awesome. Diane, congrats. I got your email um, uh, responding to our, you get a special email from us when you create your first feed. <laughs> um, handcrafted. I wait and write every single one individually. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but yes, create first feed and, and it's easy, right? It's pretty easy. Yeah. Cool. All right. So Nora was kind of leaning into this, this idea of, um, you know, getting results back from our customers and that kind of thing. And uh, you know, at Hello Audio, we truly believe that audio is the next landscape of attention. Uh, as we are so focused at our phones and looking at TikTok and watching all the things, all great and all like we're not trying to replace any of that. But um, a place that is kind of underserved, if you will, or or it's not like undervalued or sorry, it's not that it's it's less valuable. It's undervalued. People aren't really using it and thinking about it in the way that our tool allows you to, to really get content out there in audio format. And the idea that maybe we look at our phones too much, or maybe we're watching, you know, um, way too many videos and sitting at our computer too long audio, the, the thing that you can put in your pocket and take on the go, that's where now we need to meet our customers at. And that's what we want to talk to you about today. So what we're going to do in this workshop, we want to like arm you with ideas on how you can monetize what you know, your expertise, and even your content that you already have <laughs> very quickly. Um, and that's what's cool about audio. It helps you get that stuff out way faster. So the agenda, we're going to look at audio, um, briefly talk about it just to make sure everyone is on the same page as to the opportunity that we have in front of us with audio. We're going to share five feeds that you can create and monetize very quickly. Like Diane, you can get your feed launched very quickly. Um, and then of course, like how to do that. And then at the end, which I, I should put on here is we're going to have open Q and a slash coaching, um, to help you really target for your business. How can you best use audio in your business with your niche, you know, with what you sell online, or even if you're not selling anything online yet, um, how we could possibly help you. So that's how we're ending the call today. So first super fast intro. I am the CEO and co-founder of Hello Audio. I used to teach, as I said at the very beginning, I used to teach sociology at a community college in Northern California. Um, and I left that job in 2016 when I accidentally started an online business. And uh, I used that skill set of teaching in helping other people teach online. So obviously there's been an explosion of digital courses and content. And so I was helping people because I spent a long time teaching online. And it was actually in that journey that I came up with, you know, the idea for audio. I, I hated telling people that, you know, put an MP3 file under every lesson as I was helping them design their courses because I know no one ever downloaded them. And it was only until I became a student of someone else's course that I was like, why aren't, why aren't podcast feeds have figured this out? Why can't I just like take this content, these like YouTube videos essentially and listen to them on the go. And, uh, that was when Hello Audio, um, was born. And I'm Nora, um, so another co-founder, and I actually came from corporate, so I didn't come from academia. I actually decided to take that quote-unquote traditional path uh, to, to, you know, a handful of college degrees and decided to climb the corporate ladder until I decided to get off. Um, so retired from corporate, uh, did this whole entrepreneurial thing uh, full-time, gosh, it's been a hot minute, uh, several, maybe like even a decade ago now. Um, and I've helped sell over half a billion dollars of stuff online. 
Um, so I love all things uh, marketing. I love all things sales. And I specifically <laughs> really love people sharing their expertise. That's my one of my absolute favorite things to help people with. So I'm excited that you're here. Cool. Awesome. Okay, so we're going to quickly talk about why audio, and you'll see th uh, this makes sense from a monetization perspective, like why audio can actually be seen as more valuable on the next slide. So really quick for your students, we don't have to deal with logins, right? So if you've ever bought a course, you're likely navigating, you know, passwords and um, you know, where did I put that link and what part, what module did I stop at and, and all the things, right? So whether it's Teachable, Thinkific, Kajabi, Podia, I mean, there's so many now. Um, the fact that you don't have to log in is huge from a student perspective. And then the second, which I kind of highlighted at the beginning is there's no screens. So you can kind of hit play in your favorite podcast player at the speed you enjoy cutting out the the silences if you want to and and in your you know listening preferences put it in your pocket take that run you know walk the dog uh hit the road and you know head to you know your errands whatever and that's really helpful from a student perspective now you're basically opening up more hours in the day that they can they can consume your content because typically what majority of people who have online businesses are doing is they have content that has to be consumed at a computer. And so you now are providing the option that your, your content, your voice fills space in their day that they weren't actually filling before, or maybe they were with a public podcast, right? Or like the latest true crime show, which is great, but maybe not in the professional development space or, or they bought your course, but they really just didn't, couldn't find the time to listen or to watch it. So now they can listen on the go, which is really great. From your perspective as the creator of the content, you don't have to make any videos. I mean, this is, this is everything. <laughs> so the fact that you don't have to right get your makeup done, notice my hair is up and Nora looks lovely. Um, I, I have a I nine have to, month I old. Have to go. <laughs> yeah. I, have to, I have to pick the kids up after school of an appointment. That's the only reason I look like, well, this you time. look great. I, on the other hand, did not sleep very well last night, did not get the shower in before the call. And you know what? It's okay. Because while yes, I'm on video right now, I also know that this is going into an audio format, right? So no videos is huge and then no slides. Like, yes, we're doing a workshop and this is, you know, video the first time we're teaching it. Um, so we, I did have to spend time on slides, but the fact that I don't have to do that for every product I create in Hello Audio um, is pretty amazing. Nora, do you want to take this slide? I know I created this, so um, let me know if you. <laughs> yeah, if, well, you could take this one, but then I have something yeah, you to You could add. do the next one. Okay, cool. Yeah, so um, I like to think about how all the different types of content we could put out there, right? So, and and this could be paid or freed on all of this, right? I, a one-on-one -on -one call for free probably isn't ideal use of your time, but for the most part, this is this could be freebies. This could be any paid content. And the further we go along that access um, that we have across uh, going this way is the perceived value. I'm like, is it X or Y? I forget. Um, it doesn't matter. Perceived value. As the value goes up, um, where the cons the consumer, your, your customer, your student, whoever, there is um, something that they associate with that value. So a an ebook, not that valuable. Even a workshop, you're like, eh, there's a lot of people here. Like, are they really going to be able to help me, you know, in my business? There's a perceived value um, with all of these products. And then there's the usability factor. So this is where it kind of changes of the like, are you able to um, really focus and get um, a lot of return in that focus? Or can you maybe multi multitask and take it other places? So you know, the one-on-one -on -one call showing up to one-on-one -on -one call takes a lot of time, like booking out that time in your calendar, having you both have to like, like show up at the same time. That's like a lot of focus. I mean, that's positive. I'm not saying it's negative, but where audio fits in, in this different space, which I really believe is like creating its own category is it allows you to multitask and that even adds to that perceived value, right? And the intimacy of it as well um, adds to that perceived value. So that's how I see in the all the types of offers and the modalities that you can provide support for your audience and for your customers, audio kind of creates its own category, if you will. None of these are like wrong or bad in your business, 
We're just saying that audio like holds this kind of special space um, that a lot of other types of content don't. Yeah, so um, I, and let, I'll jump in here too, before we kind of, I want to make sure first and foremost that everyone on the call understands the difference or at least you know, yes. has uh, an understanding of the difference between what we would consider a public podcast, like your typical shows and a private podcast. So if you could drop that in the chat for me, um, just so that I kind of, we know whether or not to explain that, um, that would be fantastic. What I will say about audio is that not all audio is created equal. Yes, audio is amazing and it allows people to listen on the go. It's super convenient. It fits like Lindsay was saying, it fits into all those pockets of um, your day where you're not going to log into a membership site and all that kind of stuff. It also is where people are already at. So if you are a business owner, if you're trying to monetize your expertise, you do need to meet them where they're already at. And so if we look at the numbers, what statistics are telling us, obviously podcast um, listenership, right? People consuming uh, audio in a podcast app has dramatically risen, especially after the pandemic, during and, and after the pandemic. So now we're looking at the number of hours that people are listening specifically to audio content in a podcast app is rivaling the number of hours that people are watching Netflix each and every week. So what I want you to do is I want you to think of not necessarily a traditional public podcast where you think like interviews and shows or that favorite true crime podcast maybe that you listen to. Think about using pod, the podcast app as a channel of communication, which means you can create a podcasted version of all different sorts of content, right? You could create a pod, podcast your course, right? Podcast your workshop, podcast all of the content that you've been creating. And I know, you know, there's a lot of marketers out there that are like, you know, it's always been content, 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 create more content. And we're like, oh my God, I'm tired, right? Who's reading? Who's watching? You know, it's all this kind of stuff. But when we start and what we're seeing is when we start to turn some of the content that people have already created and we're offering it in an alternative format that is easier to consume, it's more convenient to consume. It's not rocket science. They actually consume it, right? And we know everything with marketing content, you know, launch specifically like launch related content, they have to consume it in order to be ready to purchase. That's why we do webinars. That's why we do workshops and challenges. And that's why people do those things is because they want people to consume the content because it's specifically designed and intentionally designed to get people ready to purchase, whether it's mindset shifts or information, awareness, belief building, epiphanies that need to happen, all of that stuff. And so by being able to use what we would call a private podcast, which essentially is it, it plays in your normal podcast apps, like uh, whatever one's your favorite. I think I use Google Podcasts. I think uh, some people use Apple Podcasts, although they don't love it. Um, what are some of the other ones that you use? Uh, Pocket Cast is mine, the one I use. Pocket Cast. Um, I know Podcast Addict is another one. So think about all these different things that, you know, you're already listening to, to that content there. Now you could actually open that app and there would be a course that you paid for or a workshop that you paid to attend or a summit. Holy crap, summits. Like how many times are you going to log into that membership site and watch a bazillion and four videos? Like you're not. But if they were offering that all the summit recordings in, in a pod, in an audio form where you could hit play, stick that phone in your pocket and go about your day, you're a lot more likely to get listen to that content and get the gems that you may have otherwise not received by not listening to that content, right? So I want you to think about private podcasts as a way to can put your content in this audio container that's so convenient that using apps people are already listening to today and it's protected, meaning you're able to create unique access links. So instead of being like public podcasts where there's it's available to the general public, anyone could subscribe. If you have a public podcast today, I could subscribe. You won't know, necessarily know it's me, but with a private podcast, you could subscribe, whether it's with a purchase or maybe just an opt-in, but it's gated, meaning you give me your email address or you're giving me your email address and maybe some monet, some cash, right? And I'm giving you a unique access link that's tied to your email address. So now not only did we gate the content so that you know we know that that's your unique link and it's a one click access once you click it you can set it up so it clicks and it expires that link expires once that person uses it that's an option but now i know when you're listening versus in a public podcast you don't know who specifically is listening and when with private podcasts you you have that information and you can actually take action on that so i wanted to kind of just pause here before we kind of go forward want to make sure that makes sense um, in terms of what a private podcast would be versus a public podcast. Any questions about that? 
that one's an important concept to get before we move forward. I see Mike is saying like has a public podcast and con is concerned about charging for a private one. We can talk. So when we get, we're, we're about to get to like the different types of, you know, ideas that we have and what our users are using for monetization. So we can talk about, um, save that question because we can answer that question specifically. Um, and we uh, can definitely help with that. And we got some great podcasters on here as well who are finding it useful. So cool. All right. So let's dive in. So to get the most out of the workshop, this is kind of one of those workshops shops where, you know, we're not teaching like a walkthrough of like, do this. And then you do this, like a template of like whatever. And you're taking notes because it's like this, like exact method to do whatever, whatever. No, this is an, a great idea expansion type of workshop. So what I want you for the next, you know, 15, 20 minutes, as we kind of lay out the types of content that you can monetize, I want you not to be like writing down exactly what I'm saying, but I want you going like, idea, idea, like write down the thoughts coming into your head about your business. Don't like overthink the like stuff we're saying. Um, and we're not going to do a lot of like prescriptive template type of teaching today, not in this specific workshop. Um, this is more of, um, helping you really, uh, sit with your business and be like, where could I use this? What could be easy? And then we'll kind of, um, you know, flip, flip a little bit, um, open up for sharing. So people can share kind of some ideas that came up for them. And then we, uh, will talk about like how to best execute it. And then we'll go into coaching as well. So we can talk about, Hey, I'm a public podcaster. How can I best monetize? You know, Hey, I, I teach nutrition and meal planning. What can I do? We will take those, those at the end. So super important. Um, just the, how, how I want you to wrap your mind about this. Okay, cool. Go. So, Nora, I added, so we have five that we're going to give you. And then a bonus. I actually added two bonuses because I added a zero <laughs> Oh, nice! before I even talked to Nora. Too. Yeah. So like you've heard us, I'm going to give you like ideas, but one idea is I already have this course. I'm just going to like put it in here and make a course feed. So <laughs> the first idea is repurpose any content you already have. Now, that can look like a different layer of what we're about to teach, like specifically, but if you already have something done, that is the best starting place. Because what we do at Hello Audio is we can take your recorded videos like this and just drag and drop and we convert it to an MP3 becomes episodes. And then you just like email it to your folks. So, um, repurpose is a great starting point. So as I share this slide, think about, is there any content you have? Maybe it's an old ebook. Um, maybe it's a course that's live right now. And you just want to surprise, you know, your current students and say, Hey, I'm going to make a podcast version, or maybe there's a course you have right now and you're going to upsell the podcast version, mm -hmm. or maybe you have a series of interviews you did a long time ago, you know, or a year ago or something, and you just haven't really done anything with them. Could you package it for as a download um, to build your list? Those kind of things. So um, I wanted to start here because usually starting with your content that already exists is, is the easiest. Like you can have a feed up in an hour or two, if that's the case. Um, and, and you will get ideas as we walk through the five, the top ways that people are monetizing, you'll get ideas that might be something you can repurpose. And that's the format you use, um, or totally can do brand new content as well. Audio recording, brand new content is way easier than video recording, brand new content and arguably easier than going in and Canva and making a PDF. Like that takes a lot of effort too. It's not, it's not nothing. Um, cool. So I threw in that slide zero, Nora. Yeah, no, it's great. And I, I would consider that like your old but gold content. Ah, right? Old the but stuff gold. That, like stuff that may, you have an ebook and like maybe not everyone's downloading ebooks anymore because we all know that they kind of go to the PDF graveyard. And so this might be a really great opportunity. It's still really great content, but you just want to deliver it in a different way and test it out. I will say we've done that um, with, and this kind of leads into this one, but we've changed where we had that PDF and it was converting and granted, mm -hmm. I thought it was doing really well. It was like a 20% to cold traffic conversion rate. We changed it over to audio and it bumped it up to 80%. 
because people just prefer to listen and they, they trusted themselves to actually get the most out of that uh, versus that PDF. So there's definitely um, a lot there that you could maybe do a content audit, like an inventory mm. of things that you've taught or things that you might have. Even if it's a written form, you could actually, you know, speak it and turn it into, uh, you know, if it's an email course, you could speak it and turn it into an audio course pretty easily. So I definitely a good one to start with. You want me to take lead magnet? Yeah, do lead magnet. Yeah. And why are we including lead magnet in a monetization discussion? Uh, because you need people to sell to, right? Ah. Like we, we all need we all need to build like that audience. And and I will say this, you know, when we look at marketing today, uh, we look at the options for traffic generation and you know, looking at your existing reach. It can be challenging, especially with some of the organic algorithms that are currently happening today to get people's attention. And so what one of the things we've seen with using private podcasts and specifically, you know, using audio as a lead magnet is it's a little it's different. It's different than that PDF, right? It's it's different than that um, the uh, the webinar that really no one wants to register for, right? So I think, or, and or, right? You could also include like this one, we're doing a workshop, a live workshop because we wanted the interaction. We want to be able to coach and provide a lot of value that way. And we have a, a, a supplementary private podcast with the recording and maybe some other information that we thought would be helpful. So, um, you know, think about using audio. So what can this look like? It can, you know, uh, the PDF plus audio. So maybe you have a PDF workbook that's really great and you use an audio as a guide to help people through this. The biggest thing, well, there's a lot of reasons I love audio for lead magnets, but it really helps develop a connection earlier in the customer journey than most other lead magnets, because with audio, it's a lot more intimate, right? You're, they're listening. They have your voice in their ears. You know, it's in their head. It's, it just creates more of a connection so that by the time they're done listening to you, they already feel like they have, mm -hmm. they've, they've gotten to know you, right? It's a great place for them to get a sense of your personality and your quirks, right? And, and kind of allow you to establish that rapport and that connection that helps them identify whether or not you're the right fit for them. And there's, there's a lot of, it's easy to consume it actually gets consumed. Most lead magnets don't, which makes it harder for them to, to take the next step, right? Whatever your ascension path is, whatever offer you're providing in them next in your sequence, if they don't consume the lead, lead magnet content, and it's typically architected to you know, be that conversation flowing into the next offer, if they don't consume it, chances are your conversions will be lower on whatever you're trying to sell. So it's not only great from an attraction standpoint, it stands out in the market. It also is really great to get people from one point to the next point, which is why we love audio lead magnets as well. Nice. Okay, cool. So we got to start with building your list, right? Uh, yeah. Okay. So audio courses. Now this is something that at Hello Audio, um, we've recently uh, been working on. We've done two live iterations now. We just had our last coaching call for ACA, Audio Course Accelerator. Um, but yeah, we kind of want to bring back audio courses. Uh, when I first was talking about Hello Audio um, um, and we were building it and my grandma was like, what are you doing again? Because she was all confused why I left teaching, you know? <laughs> I spent all that money on education. Um, and I remember saying like, well, you know, like podcast, right? And she knew what a podcast was. And she's like, and so I'm like, yeah, so like people are putting courses in podcast form. And she's like, oh yeah, like my real estate on tape. Like that's how I learned how to be a real estate agent. Yes. So like audio courses aren't new, um, you know, books on tape are a thing, audio, you know, tapes, there was those huge like folder things that you, yeah, whatever. So, so we're kind of like, we should bring that back because the reality is, is like mo a lot of content doesn't really need uh, as much visual as we think. Like maybe it needs like a couple parts of visual, you know, some walkthroughs, but a lot of content is talking head content. And, and, and what happens is, is people make slides as a replacement for teaching. And then like, there's not really like umph behind what's, what's happening. And so with an audio course, it's cool because you kind of give permission um, to your students to like really like deeply spend time with you and focus. And I think the with the advent of like, you know, noise canceling headphones and stuff like 
when you're listening to audio, you're more focused than when you're watching something. It's just, it's just how it is. And so by putting your course material there, something people gave you money for, they tend to get results in a great way. So we like at Hello Audio, the idea of monetizing audio first type content. Now we're not, yes, maybe audio only also, but usually it's audio first. And so there might be an accompanying workbook. There might be one or two walkthrough videos to get set up. But the content is really delivered, um, you know, in a podcast player via audio. And so this is a great monetization um, strategy because it's different. Like Nora kind of already said earlier, it's very different than what's out there right now. And so people are like, oh, I don't have to log into a site and like, oh, I don't have to watch a video and like, you know just like get distracted by whatever her hair looks like or, or whatnot. And yeah, audio first. So, um, could you turn an old course into an audio only thing and you don't have to redo it? Yeah, probably. Um, especially if it's not a very visual course, if it's a visual course, you might have to finagle some new things. You might have to record, you know, some, some audio explaining why, you know, it's an audio first course and that there are certain sections that are video, you know, focused. And what's cool with hello audio is, um, links in the show notes can direct you to, you know, a membership site or wherever you're hosting videos. Um, if you want to do that. So idea number two is doing audio first courses, whether it's repurposing or building from scratch, like I've said over and over again, it's way easier to make audio courses from scratch than video courses. Um, but yeah, that's that's definitely one of our favorites because it's we're kind of bringing it back, I like to say. <laughs> we're making audio courses cool again. <laughs> it's so cool. And I will say yeah. this too with the audio course, we have a lot of folks that have been trying to create their course for months and sometimes even mm. years. And there's been a lot, like whether it's them getting on video, whether it's them, the slides are a pain in the butt, it's video editing, it's all the things that go into it. And they're nervous, like I'm gonna put all this work and effort into creating a course and I don't even know if it's gonna sell. Audio is fast. Audio, you don't need to be, sorry, my dog is snoring, he's sick. So he's right next to me and I apologize if you're hearing him snore, so I'm keeping an eye on him. But wow, he snores like an old man. Awesome. Um, so apologies for that. But it it is, it's like rapid content creation. You can test it a lot faster. You don't have to worry about all the production costs. You literally could record on your phone. You don't have to worry about the tech setup. It's, it's like there's not a complicated, you don't have to worry about an LMS, like a learning management system and all that kind of stuff. So um, we do have a lot of folks that are building their first course and finally getting it done because they're using audio to start. So that's exciting. Oh, workshops. This is so much fun. So you've seen, I don't know if, if you've been, depending on what industry you play in, um, workshops have been workshops and lots of other things I'm sure we'll talk about here in a second, but workshops specifically, whether they're paid or free, um, I mean, not necessarily webinars, right? There's a difference between a webinar and a workshop, but webinars work as well. We'll talk about that here in a minute, but it's, you know, workshops being able to provide an audio, even if it's a replay, so mm -hmm. how many, even if like a live, we had a lot more registrants for this live workshop than we had folks show up live. And that's normal, right? This time we knew people were signing up knowing that they weren't necessarily going to be able to time. We could have picked any time and it wasn't going to work for everyone, but now they know they can listen to the replay. It's not just log in or sit there in their, in their computer and watch the video replay. It's now being able to provide an audio replay of the workshop as well, which is a lot more convenient for people to actually consume. And if your chances are if using a workshop to monetize your expertise, there's usually a next step, right? They, they need to, whether you're maybe selling coaching or consulting, or maybe it's a course or some other high ticket offer, usually, and maybe the workshop is, is the, you know, offer as well. Being able to offer that replay as a convenient audio listen is a really nice way to beef up the value of the offer of that paid workshop, if that's what you do. Uh, but we really do love working with um, audio with workshops. And I will say one thing too, Lindsay, you had mentioned if it's visual content, because I know we've had some folks that do, that teach um, like Facebook ads, like things that are really visual. And there's a big benefit to kind of audio, like removes the pressure, right? I think, you know, we always kind of say, and Lindsay, you say this, it's like a low pressure way to consume mm -hmm. the information, right? Even if it is visual, 
Um, if you haven't logged in, you could maybe maybe you or your students or your audience feel like feel like they're a little bit behind. Same thing with a workshop. They maybe they weren't able to show up live or you know, they feel a little bit behind. It's a low pressure way for them to kind of listen to where you're taking them, right? It, repetition is kind of key, especially if you have some heavy concepts that people may need to hear a couple of times to really understand. But it's it's a nice way for you to get that repetitive and also low pressure way for them to consume it. I don't know how many people have purchased products, whether they're courses, workshops, coaching, all the things and wish maybe you would have finished it or consumed it. And if it was in a private podcast that you could literally press play anywhere you were at, chances are you would have had a higher completion rate on those. And that's what your people are thinking as well. So yes, yes definitely yeah. yes to workshops. Yeah. And I want to say too, I'm pretty sure. So, so we're hosting a very, a video first <laughs> right now, like live, right? Like Nora said, I believe there are people who have hosted workshop like um, that are only audio. So, mm -hmm. so while, while in our heads, especially because we're literally doing it <laughs> audio, we, we have seen our users kind of break up the exact style we're doing, break up a webinar, break up, you know, um, we'll talk about launches here later, but like break up the kind of sequence that we typically see in marketing, um, that that cadence that they take you through of like you know awareness and all of that um and you could totally do that in a workshop uh format in podcast in in audio form so that could be like the intro you meet Nora and and Derek and Lindsay and then the like why audio like which actually as you noticed we had that pre-nurture content workshop feed um that we're playing with right now and and testing content there we dropped some case studies so you actually had the opportunity to learn stuff before you even showed up right so will we maybe in the future test audio only workshops possibly what we wanted, like Nora said, is we wanted to create this experience where we could coach with you. So that's, I always like sharing the behind of why we make marketing decisions, um, because we're never going to, we're never going to say workshops are dead. Like don't ever show up live. Don't, we would never say that because it's just, it's just not true. However, we could say, do you, would you rather host an evergreen version of a workshop that doesn't involve coaching and put it in audio? You could totally do that, right? That could totally be an offer that you have. So I just wanted to add, it doesn't have to look exactly like what we're doing right now. It can actually be an audio first workshop as well. Oh, whoop, too far. <laughs> Challenges. Is this one, this one's fine. <laughs> Um, so we've hosted multiple, actually, this is kind of one of our go-tos, um, you know, everyone loves a good challenge or boot camp or, you know, uh, whatever they're calling them these days. I've, I've been seeing boot camp a lot more again. Um, so yeah, everyone kind of loves that because there's that live component where everyone's focused for whether it's three days, people are kind of shortening them right now, whether it's a couple weeks, whether it's 30 days, um, it creates a um, you know, timed experience, uh, a live experience that allows people to show up together and, and make progress together. What we love is of course it could be an audio first challenge. And we've had lots of people do again, only audio, um, often for a limited time and maybe host a work, uh, call. So that's how we've done it at hello audio. All the content is the content that drops in our challenges often is as audio first. And then we host coasting call coaching calls every week. We've had users host live challenges, as you know, with workshop style, you know, weekly kind of content replay goes in the feed, um, and does their coaching calls, all the things. And what we're noticing is the, in, the consumption rate goes up and the conversion rate goes up just because exactly what Nora said earlier, getting them through the material, getting them to learn what makes, you know, you, you special, why they want to, you know, sign up for your thing that has to happen. And most of the time, especially with challenges, because everyone's done this, right? You sign up with every intention of doing the challenge <laughs> and then you fall behind and you can't make the calls and yada, yada, yada. And that's all cool. But what audio does is allow someone to catch up. There's a, it's a, it's an easier way for them to consume the content, which then means if you're pitching something at the end, which is often the case, not always, um, but if you're pitching something at the end, the conversion rates go up because people consumed again, consumption equals conversion, not equals directly, but like increases. Um, and so, yeah, challenges are a great use case. I think we do have <laughs> Kendra as the mm -hmm. example in the yeah. case studies that we shared in that. Um, cool. 
Yeah, love it. Uh, launching with audio. This is one of my favorites because, oh, you know, there's a lot of ways to launch. There's a lot of product launch, you know, PLF with Jeff Walker, and you've got, you could do a challenge on the front end of your launch and a workshop series. There's a lot of different ways to do it. And what we typically will see is that when we have a user that adds a private podcast to their existing launch, didn't change anything else about the content, didn't change anything else about their traffic strategy. They've changed nothing else, but all they did was add the private podcast. We see conversion rates, whatever they're selling, go up sometimes 10, 20 plus percent, which is crazy. Like that to, to think that that's something that a simple private podcast and all you're doing is you're enabling, you're making it easier for people to consume the launch content. It's all it is, right? Whether you're using videos, whether you're using workshops, whatever that is, um, that's pretty amazing. The other thing we've seen, and this also works for email launches. So if you're doing a list launch, you know, allowing people instead of to remember to find that email in their inbox, especially if they're one of us that gets thousands of emails every day, um, that's really a great opportunity to be able to provide that content in a different way that has a higher likelihood of getting consumed. And one of our case studies, and I think we included Emily's um, uh, at least her story, I think, was on the the landing page for the workshop. She actually decided to be, you know, because some of us that have ever done a launch, you know, like I hate launches, <laughs> burned out, right? Depending on the way your launch was designed, it's possible that you're just kind of done. She made the decision to do an audio only launch. She's like, you know what? I just let's keep it easy, right? And sometimes we absolutely need those choices in our lives to do an audio only launch. Um, I think she used a pop up podcast, which we love. So pop up podcast is just a time limited pop, you know, podcast where um, you everyone gets access to it, but then it expires in a certain amount of time. So you could do that date driven if you're doing a date launch with affiliates and that kind of stuff. And you know, it goes live on a Monday and maybe it expires on a Friday for everyone. Or if you're doing evergreen. Right. We do at Hello Audio, we have the ability to do evergreen expiration dates, too. So maybe everyone gets it for three or five or seven days. And that date timeline is actually decided based on when that user, that specific user signs up. So you could do those things as well. But uh, Emily had a, a lot of success. I think she generated like 40K um, just on an audio launch alone, uh, which is really helpful uh, to know that that option exists. But you can add it to an existing launch or maybe you just use it to, to do your launch. And that's the only thing you have to worry about all the other crazy things that you can do or all the complicated launch strategies that are existing out there but it's something that you can get started and do it really quickly and again audio just makes it super easy for people to consume so they consume it and when they consume their content assuming your content is like architected so that they buy right you're building the trust you're helping them have the epiphanies and the realizations and the beliefs that they need in order for them to be ready to purchase and, and conversions we've seen time and time again conversions are increased when you're using private podcast to help with your launch. Awesome. Um, I see a question. You want me to grab that question? The, sure. uh, what... I was talking and I did not realize I was muted because I was coughing. Oh. Um, go I was going to say related to Phoenix's question, we could go back to the challenges piece too. You're seeing a lot of people charge for challenges now, right now too, whether it's $5, $10, $50, it all works, right? And related, same with timing for the most part. So I think with timing, like I, when I first started my business, who was this, the green smoothie chicks? I forget. Um, oh. Jada. Yeah. Anyways, there was this very popular challenge like called green smoothie, smoothie challenge. I don't remember. They, had, they made a book. Um, it was big. And so like, yeah, things go in and out of style, right? 30 days. It kind of makes sense. Like you want to like drink a green smoothie every day. They give you a recipe. It was tied to like, you know, a Facebook group and, and it was great. There wasn't a lot of like, you know, a, a challenge like we have was like create a black Friday offer. Like that's like very, it's different than like drink a smoothie. That's a habit building challenge. That's what I'm trying to say. Habits, right. Pro are going to take a little bit longer possibly than let's say, um, you know, create your first audio course. Like, okay, we looked at what needs to happen to create an audio course. And we actually think it's way easier than a video course. We decided to make it 30 days. It's not a challenge. It's, it's, it's an accelerator. So, it, so it's this idea that you could do that in a certain length of time. So whenever someone asks like, how long should something be? It's kind of like, what is your promise? Right. And don't say you're going to create an audio course in three days when the reality is, is like, that's, 
like impossible. Like even if you stayed up all day recording lessons, um, you know, it's not, it's impossible. I mean, maybe the, the catch is, you know, repurpose content, then yeah, you could do it in like 12 hours. Right. So you have to match the promise to like how long it will take. What you will notice is people do start trimming off the amount of time because they start to, you know, come up with ways to maybe make it faster. And if you can do that and deliver on that promise to your audience, and you're not like, pulling a fast one on them, it is better that it's shorter. So I'm always like, it should be as short as possible to get the result that you're promising. And so, yes, of course you'll see unique, like spins on numbers, like three days, four days, 12 days, who knows? I haven't heard that one, but like people play with that, right? Because obviously pattern disrupt and all of the things. So the typical one is like a five day challenge. That's like the, one of the most common right now, but I'm seeing a lot more three day ones. Um, and so, yeah, it kind of depends on what your promise, you know, you're offering and like what you're having them do during that time. And like, does it make sense? And obviously the shorter than the less they feel that they're going to get lost and fall behind because the longer it is, the more likely that there's drop off is, is what we're always dealing with. So that's my thoughts on that. Yeah. And the content. Jada, too, Jada right? Selner, duh. I'm like, <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. I totally forgot. Um, yeah. Anyways. Yeah. And just think about the, like, um, I always like to design challenges or workshops. Like, what am I? Yes. You have to think about the begin with the end in mind, right? What's the transformation? What's the whole, like, is, the, is it an epiphany? Are they going to have something at the end? Are they going to feel a certain way? Like, what's the end point compared to the beginning point? How long is it going to take me? Like, how much content do I need? Because I only want to give them just the content they need to get there. None of the other stuff. Like, I don't, I'm just trying to keep it really tight. And based on that, you know, what am I asking them to do every day? And if you're asking them to do three hours of work or listening every day, is that realistic for your Mm -hmm. audience? If you have a bunch of like busy moms, probably not. So I take that into consideration as well. Yeah. Like that. Okay, cool. All right. So bonus. Whoops. I <laughs> extra extra bonus. Um, <laughs> extra okay. Extras. So, oh, we like this. So monetization, right? Upsells, bumps, maybe that should be flipped, bumps and upsells. Um, for those of you who are into fancy funnel building and, and you're like, okay, cool, I know what this is. For those of you who are like, I have no idea what she's talking about, you maybe have experienced them if you've bought products online. A bump is you're on the checkout page and someone's like, buy this course. And then you're like, hey, add this like, you know, workshop that I recorded that's very related that will also get you a result. And it often is, I don't know, usually it ranges from like $17 up to like 97 typically, right? And so you hit that checkbox and it's all purchased on the same checkout, right? And so they run your card once and you bought the original thing and you added the bump. Uh, the bump is a template, the bump is whatever. So, so audio makes a great bump, right? Because you're essentially saying, Hey, buy this thing. And then like, oh, do you want the audio version because of X, Y, and Z? Boom. Or do you want the audio version or these like interviews and case studies that go with it? Boom. Um, what we're finding is a lot more people like putting the, the private podcast feed in their main content because it helps with the conversions and because it helps get results. So we, we don't see a ton of people withholding that just because it's so valuable to your audience. But adding a, an, a bump that's an audio training of something else that's totally related, that's really easy for you to create, it's, it just makes for an extra way to increase cart value, which is the, you know, the amount of dollars coming in per buyer, right? Upsells is that next page, right? Where they're like, oh, by the way, like you can you know, hire me one-on-one and it costs you this many dollars. And it, this offer is only in this here. Like you can only have it for this limited time. That's an upsell. It tends to be in the several hundred dollar range. Um, you've also seen downsells and, you know, three upsell, like you've seen the whole funnel, like all the products. So it works at all of those stages, but we just wanted to share the idea that adding kind of extra audio content there can help increase cart value and results for your people. And it makes it easier for you to create. So usually when you're designing a funnel, you're like, what other things do I have that, that relates to this? Sometimes you're creating new stuff. We created for ACA some new stuff. And so when you do have to create new stuff for your bumps and upsells, you know, audio, I think audio is the answer because it just makes it so much easier. What we're seeing a lot of too are like Voxer days, which is audio re- related, not private podcast, but like the the concept of async audio. So um, just kind of getting your mind turning there. Um, 
around uh, average cart value. Nora, anything to add there? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of things you could do. Um, I know we'll talk about some of the bonuses here on the next slide. So if you want to go, I'm probably going to mention a couple things. Like, yeah. but you know, we talked about summits and events. Um, we have a lot of folks that will choose to include the audio version of the replays as an upsell. Sometimes as a bump that tends to get really. Um, you know, it's, or even live events. How many times have you bought a recordings for the live event, right? And now it, it's just being able to modernize the ability to offer those recordings. So it's not just like the videos or the Zoom links or in a membership area, you're able to kind of offer those things as well. There's just, there's a, depending on how you structure your business and what you sell, which we'll get into Q&A here in, in, a, in a minute. So we can kind of maybe give you some more guidance on what we would do specifically if we mm -hmm. were in your shoes. Um, and did what you did. There's just, there's a lot of ways to structure um, audio products as, as whether it's the core offer or it's the front end offer. Um, I know, you know, Amy Porterfield is a user of Hello Audio and she's done really amazing things with Hello Audio over the last year. She uses it as, I think she positioned it originally for her DCA students as a bonus um, mm -hmm. so that, yeah. you know, for folks that were worried about the, I don't have time, that's usually the sales objection. I don't have time to go to these courses or these, these calls, or if you sell coaching um, calls or group coaching calls. Um, or I don't have time to get through all the content, having a private podcast is a great um, way to kind of uh, squash that objection because you're just making it easier for them to consume and, and that gives them the, the belief that they can do it. It's more doable. She's used it as a lead magnet on the front end for workshops. And I think she had a couple of, maybe a, a pop-up podcast that did really well. So just depends on your audience and and honestly where where you're leading people to, but there's a lot of different ways. And, and Lindsay kind of, we, we list, there's the, how can you not? It's, you know, whether it's discovery calls, if you're a consultant, we have someone that speaks their email newsletters because it's like, hey, would you rather listen to this? And then, you know, here we can now, it's just another way to communicate with your audience. It's not, you're not just limited to your, you know, email inbox. If you think about the private podcast and the podcast app as another channel of communication, it's, it's a great way to reach your people. Yeah. And it's a, it's um something that can be monetized as well. Like even though some people, so I think almost everything we've shared, you could go free or paid. And that's because mm -hmm. your free content should be as valuable as it can be to get an email address. So um, that's why we, you know, we walk that fine line, but even the paid newsletters, I mean, we know with Substack, I know Substack has podcasting mm -hmm. as part of their thing. So people are used to paying an extra five bucks for the format that they prefer. So it doesn't even necessarily have to be be something you do for free. There are ways to monetize, um, I would say, almost all of these. The nurture sequence, I think, is usually attached to something paid or some sort of conversion event. But um, I think most of these could could easily be their own paid product, um, their own bump, their own upsell, their own you know main offer, um, however you look at it. Cool. Okay. So that was a lot. <laughs> And usually, usually when people listen to our success stories podcast or come to workshops, especially these like idea generating ones, you're probably like, okay, now I thought I was going to come and learn how to like make one thing. And now I have 30, like, where do I start? So, um, sorry about that. <laughs> so I want to help you like whittle it down. Like, I think that's a skill that we can use too at the, at the end, there's always a starting point. There's always what feels easiest? There's always who's around you right now, like those kind of questions. And then there's future things that you can do too. So um, I don't know if anyone is open to dropping in the chat or wanting to share maybe the the thing that they think they're going to launch first, or um, if they got, came up with a couple ideas. Um, we will also get into full full blown coaching as well, but I wanted to use this time to kind of process what we just went through for the last 20 minutes. <laughs> so yeah, um, uh, you can drop it in the chat or you can come off mute and share uh, quickly what you're thinking and you can share your business as well uh, and introduce yourself too, if you wanna come off mic. Paul, I would like to ask a question. Great. Hi. Yeah, go for it. Awesome. Thank you so much. And thank you guys so much for doing this today. This is incredibly helpful. Um, so two different things. I am a real estate photographer and I teach other photographers how to do real estate photography. So I've taken that, that entire course and converted that to audio. And I, this is just a, a plug for you guys. Um, my students are absolutely love it. Like they, they were not 
consuming all the content before and there's over 80 videos that I created. So now there's super stuff that they can just listen to it. So I'm excited about that. Um, so thank you. Um, my question is- I love it. Is, and super visual, by the way, like literally yeah, photography. That's awesome. <laughs> yes, it's super yeah. visual. Um, yeah. But a lot of stuff like they can go back to, I I'm seeing mm -hmm. how I can use the show notes where I can link it going, okay, if you want to see this, you can go in this part of the membership part of the site and go watch this specifically. Yeah. Otherwise, if they need it even to remind themselves, if they watch the video, then they can listen to it while they're driving and- you know, help their, their subconscious remember everything. So it's awesome. Cool. Um, so here's the question. So I'm, I'm going to create a, a private podcast and it's going to be more related towards the business side of building a business. Um, and within this mini membership, there's going to be several courses. So my question is within this mini membership site that I have, and let's say I have a, a course on productivity and then I have a, a, a course on customer service. Would I create a private podcast for each of those courses because it's all part or just one because all the courses are going to sit on one mini membership site? Yeah, great question. So it, I have a couple thoughts. So typically like, Typically, we like to say that separate courses should be separate feeds because from a user perspective, a listener perspective, when they go into their podcast player, first of all, it looks really awesome when it's all your stuff. Like that means they're like into you, right? Like they got yeah. all your things and they're thinking about you and you're at the top of their, their podcast library, right? I think that's great. And it, it looks cool. It's like you take over their app. Um, but from a like user perspective, it's like, I, especially like productivity or mindset. It's like, I need a mindset boost right now. I just want to go, like, I know exactly where it is. I know what the image looks like. You know, they all like kind of look similar. Boom. There's the thing. Um, uh, because as we all know with podcast apps, you know, for many of us who have like uh, been listening to podcasts who have hundreds and hundreds and sometimes even thousands of episodes, it's really hard to get to episode one and start pinging. So if you're like putting that on your students to like have to navigate an app mm -hmm. to find where the course is in one feed, they're going to experience that. I'll say the caveat, if your courses are really short, like four episodes, like it's really truly a mini course. It's not like this very, very long, long course. You might be able to fit it in one feed. If it's like related to a specific subject area, we just did this with our ACA students. We called it the ACA bonus feed. I dropped three mini courses that were tied to like teaching online. And I, I basically said on the front of it, I was like, you know, um, I think it was teach live and a colon. And then like the first lesson, teach live colon first. So now you see though, you get into a problem when they have to like navigate the episodes. It has to be really clear that that's a course. And so then my next content was analyze your course. And then with the episode title. And so when they go in, because there's only like, I think the first one had like five or six episodes. And then the last two mini courses had three it's not that overwhelming to navigate. I also know we're not going to be adding a ton of stuff after. So when you look at a membership feed, if you know you're going to be like dropping new courses all the time, again, we're talking about a feed that's getting very long and yep. you're going to get those emails that say like, where's the productivity like feed? So usually it's separate like separate okay. them. Definitely separate course content from calls because especially with membership sites, if you do like weekly calls yeah. or group coaching, um, get replays and stuff in their own feed and then get like content that you want them to binge in another feed. Okay. So within like my many membership website and you have the course, you're like, Hey, if you want to listen to this one, you can come into this private feed and boom, you're in. And then down below is the next course. You can pop into this feed. That would be the best. Way I to go think about that it. would be the best way, like, and have them opt in. So another thing too, like for those of you who like, don't really know, like how Hello Audio is set up, like when you create a feed, they get an email that gives them their own unique link. So if upon signing Paul's signing up for Paul's course, I got 50 podcast feeds of every course, that wouldn't be good. So having them opt in and say, raise their hand and say, yes, this is the mini okay. course I want, I think would be the best way to do that from, if there's like a main, I'll say this with membership sites, there's often foundational content that you want like every single person to do. 
if that's true, I would make sure that feed is sent to them automatically. And then, and then maybe they opt in for some of the smaller content courses. That would Got it. possibly be how I would do that. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Cool. Absolutely. Yeah. Put that onboarding one, like your uh, onboarding, like an onboarding content, feed for um, sure. Yeah. Make yep. sure they get okay. that one and then just tell them what's available. Um, not everyone's going to be ready for everything at once. Like mm-hmm. Lindsay said, it's going to be, I'm, I need, I, my perception is I need this right now. So they'll opt in for that. Um, the user experience is going to be better by keeping it separate. And it gives you the ability to monetize them separately if you so choose to. Mm. So that's the other benefit of it is if you decided to create and, and pull out that mindset course to sell on as a front end or as a low ticket, as a preview of like what's to come in your membership, that's easy. Um, with memberships, one, especially evergreen memberships, one of the best ways to create urgency um, is to offer like a bonus, like a timed bonus. Like if you join in January, you get this. And so you could potentially use those um, strategically there as well. But yeah, I absolutely agree. That's 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 the way I would do it. Great. Thank you so much. That was super helpful. I appreciate it. Awesome. Thanks. Okay. We got super a couple cool. questions coming in here. Okay. Um, yeah. Lots of stuff. Cool. We got a parent challenge for parents oh, of students about to go to me. college. Oh, that's good. That's totally me. I'm your yeah. ideal audience for that one. <laughs> um, Natalie's rough. launching an audio mini course as a lead magnet. Cool. Um, Monica had a question. Um, where do people play the audio? So it goes to basically their public podcast app of choice or their podcast player of choice. When you sign up for, or when you get an, uh, an email from Hello Audio, it gets a, it, especially if you're sending it to that unique person, there's a button in there that says click to listen and it opens a page. We call it the subscribe page. Derek will do a demo in a second. We'll do a short demo of how a Hello Audio works. Um, you will see the link of several popular players and you're, and that student can like click on it and say, yeah, subscribe me in my choice. And then if their choice isn't represented, they can copy the RSS feed and open it in their choice of player. But we, um, deeply in the podcasting space know the most popular ones. So we have the top used used apps and then, um, provide a, a link to help them with other apps that they maybe don't, um, see if they use a different one. Um, so that's where they play the audio. Good question. Um, Mike's question, can you comment on what you can include in the show notes, images to add to the audio? Um, this is kind of like a, a Derek, I don't know if you want to chime yeah, in. So I, I we can do links. In, in oh, you dropped in the chat, okay. but I can talk about it also. Yeah, you can hyperlink to things. So anything that's linkable, um, you could send a link to an image, a doc. We do a lot of Google Docs in our show notes and then a video if it's something visual. You can link to yeah. the stuff from within the show notes. Yeah. Our big thing, just so you know, we, we don't have a podcast player at Hello Audio, right? So we're trying to meet your people where they're already at. We're not asking them to download anything new. That's a good thing for you because most people don't do that. (laughs) So um, we're at the whim of their podcast player. So the day that podcast players allow images in show notes, we will be there (laughs) and we will like get in there. But as of right now, it's links um, and text is basically what can, what can go there. So that's uh, how that works. And somebody asked if we could share PDFs from within Hello Audio. Again, it, it would be linked to a PDF that's hosted somewhere else. We host yeah. the audio and put it in the podcast feed, but any external documents or links is just from within the show notes. They click through to get access to it. Yep. Cool. Raquel's talking about repurposing an IG Live. Ooh, Ooh. I love this idea. Um, yeah. And a workshop tonight. Yeah. So uh, most of the time, like one of the easiest ways to get into audio and and test your audience and how likely they are to use it is to um, add it as supplemental material, the stuff you're already doing. And you're just now meeting, you know, you're, you're providing it. It's an an accessibility thing. You're, you're, you're that teacher online that's giving them other options. And usually people love you for that as Paul shared, right? Like usually they're like, wow, I haven't seen this before. And for the person who doesn't like audio, that's cool too. They're, they're into your stuff, but for the people that like audio, um, or have ADHD, I know (laughs) there's, I think it was Diane actually sent Derek a message like me. Um, the the ability to sit and like pay attention to a video for something is just it's just tough. And so this really meets um, folks where they're at, like what what they're dealing with already, right? Cool. Um, 
Lisa audio blog newsletter. Oh, okay. So Lisa's asking and then framed it into a question. Um, what do you think about doing an audio blog newsletter as a public podcast? So we get this question a lot. So people are like, okay, lead magnet, like, why wouldn't I just put it out in public for free if it's not the paid thing? This is a very common question. Nora, how do we typically answer this question? Yeah, I mean, so it can be done. And I saw in the chat, you know, Kristen, you're doing it, which I think is great. I, I think so. One thing I will say is that um, there's this, I don't know if it's just the myth that's out there for the people that teach how to how to launch a public podcast. There's this thought that if you put it out there, it's like the field of dreams. I'm just going to launch a podcast and people are going to come. That's not how it works. I think there's just a misconception of the amount of traffic you're going to mm. get just by being in a directory and hopefully someone searches and finds you. There's just, there's a lot of podcasts out there. Not to say that someone wouldn't with keywords and how you've maybe, you know, titled episodes or titled your podcast. Um, and um, if you're not pushing traffic, if you're not yeah. going to commit to actually sending traffic and getting people to subscribe to that public podcast, um, I don't, or you don't have that, that traffic strategy in place how many people, and it's the same for private, right? Like we, we need to control the eyeballs on our stuff, whether we put them in a public podcast or whether we put them in a private podcast. I, le I, I tend to lean more toward private in what I do with clients or what I would coach on um, for a couple reasons. One is because I like having data. I like knowing email. I like having the email address. I know I want to know who's listening. I want to know um, you know, how to follow up with those people. I want to, you know, just the conversation that I'm having with people versus in public. Yeah, you've got data, um, like in terms of downloads and which episodes were the most popular, but you don't know who mm -hmm. specifically is listening. Um, and so if I am really architecting the next step, if I'm using this as a way to bring people into your orbit, so that they can take the next step with you. I tend to prefer private, but public will also work as long as you're committed to either way, pushing traffic to it. Cause it, to rely on just directory search traffic isn't going to Podcast discoverability. I mean, this is a problem they've been trying to solve for a long time. Um, it's hard to find your new podcast. And most of the time people get po podcast ideas from recommendations from friends. They're not just like, I'm going to search this like generic topic. And then mm -hmm. Apple shows you so many options. It's just, that's just not, unfortunately, will that change? That might be the case. And, okay. and if it did, if discoverability got better, I mean, there are literal tech companies that are developed trying to solve this problem for the last like five years plus. Um, if it got better, then we might change our thought structure on this. But what we tend to say is everything related to what Nora said. It's a lot like basically no one's going to stumble upon your newsletter uh, feed. The one positive I could put to having it be public is sometimes the like shareable stuff, like the P-Link mm -hmm. stuff, Plink. Mm -hmm. That it is easier to reference it. And like, you could just yep. like quickly, but so is our universal link. It, it essentially is the same thing. So if you give them the link to like sign up, um, which doesn't show uh, that that doesn't allow tracking, um, you know, it keeps it private. It's not searchable, but people aren't really searching anyways, is kind of where Nora was going with that. So, um, Okay. Hopefully that helps. Donald has an interesting, so I don't understand why you would do this. Most courses can play on any smart device. Why make the extra feed? I can try and answer. Uh, um, yeah. It, I mean, they might play on smart devices. Like you can go to the website or log in if they even have an app, log into the app and watch videos and access the content. But the real benefit is what Nora was talking about earlier, which is the access that they have to your content throughout the day while on the go. And so I bet even though it plays on a smart device, if the screen's open and like on a dock sitting there in front of you, if you hit lock on your phone and put it in your pocket, it stops. And so the benefit to having that in a podcast app is those apps are built to be played in the background while you're driving, walking the dog, doing the dishes, whatever. And so it just opens up those hours that otherwise wouldn't be accessible by having it in a podcast feed. I, so I don't think that's entirely accurate. Could be which apps let you play in the background. Like YouTube does, if you're on premium, you pay for it. Um, but well, I don't know if about you, if you browsers, use Teachable, you'd use, use some other Teachable. ones that, that play courses. Yeah. yeah. You, know, you, can, yeah. you can put it on continuous play and it just keeps going in the background. Yeah. And module through module, active, lesson through lesson. Your... Say it again. I'm sorry. Lesson through lesson too. Yeah. 
Oh, you don't have to click go to the next video. That's cool. If that's the case, that's something I'll look into because it didn't used to be like that. And no. it might not yeah. be true anymore, but yeah, I'll look. That's cool. If, if you have a, a course, say mm -hmm. you have five modules, you can say continuous play and it'll go through all. Of them. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, I'll have to look into it. That's cool. That is new to me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, that might be true. So then that means um, your users in a Teachable account would have to know that and do that. What we still requires the login, and I think still requires still yeah. habits around opening the Correct. app that's in this position on the phone to go Correct. listen to stuff while I'm doing something like yeah. a popular show that I enjoy. But Correct. then I also see the course that I'm signed up for right next to it, and that could be another way to catch it's another them. it's another inbox so like if you already listen to other podcasts and i see your course title mm -hmm. when i go oh yeah i already paid for that i should listen to that um versus you know the logging into teachable you know every day that you need to log in um most it's just we're meeting people where they're already at if they have that um, behavior habit. around audio specifically. And yeah. like I said, too, um, we're very big on like audio first as well, way easier to create content and all of that. So if like, you know, repurposing course content and adding it as a supplemental thing, that's like one, one use case of hello audio, but we're also talking about all these like audio first, um, ways to do it. And the private podcast, language and marketing tool about it being exclusive and like access to it and super easy to get to um, is very different than like signing up for one of those uh, courses that are hosted in a platform like that. Yeah. And I, I will say this too, just to add, like Thinkific approached us too about integrating with their platform because they knew that even if people could listen on mobile, the likelihood that they were just like, just isn't happening. And it's a lot more difficult than most learning management platforms to actually granularly see where people are at. Yes, you can use Memberium because I've installed that on various clients and stuff too when they needed to do that and automations. I think where you know audio and specifically Hello Audio makes it e a lot easier is you can see exactly how many episodes that people listen, you can trigger off of. So I, like, if I downloaded episode four, you can now set a trigger to go tag me in your email system and shoot off an email specifically specifically to me because I, you know, you can enter me in an, an automation and that's usually more advanced features. I've installed that on clients and it can cost 20, 30, $40,000 implementations to set that up like in Memberium. And usually you have to use like, well, you can use active campaign or keep, right? But it's usually that kind of functionality isn't there. Um, and that's kind of what most people don't, they want to simplify their tech stack too. So we've had a lot of that coming across, but that's just another reason why um, this gives you some advantages over like a, a traditional LMS. But I, I understand that and all. I guess the question is, you know, most people who have podcast, who do podcasts, I mean, I mean, I have, I just got asked to do an 11 podcast series for PBN but the the idea here is, is you know I'm trying to keep down the number well sometimes you said like simplify different things for different people I mean I I've done like webinars for over a hundred thousand people to have attended at this point and you know making trying to trying to put the stuff out more easily and I'm trying to trying to understand why would I, you know, what are you really just saying is that people prefer audio and that that's just another path. It's not a replacement or it's not an addition. I mean, yeah, it's, yeah. I mean, you're you're integrating multi. You, know, you talked about multiple platforms. Now you're integrating multiple platforms. Well, if you to... use it, right? I mean, you can use Hello Audio standalone, but if you happen to have a course on Thinkific, you could directly integrate with Hello Audio and then your, aud your audience, your students get the link. Um, I think that what we're like, we're not saying video is bad. We're not saying video is dead or anything like that. What we're saying is based on the data that we have, people are listening and consuming these audio feeds, these private podcast feeds. They're the, the consumption rates go way up for every single uh, kind of use case we've looked at, whether it's a webinar, webinar replay, challenge, 
um, launch content like PLF videos, courses, like the, the consumption rates. And, and yeah, we do have people who have courses on Kajabi and Kajabi has their app and, you know, Thinkific and Teachable. But when you offer it in this kind of low pressure way that people just tend to, they consume it more. And as a result, they're converting to the next level. That's, that's kind of the, the biggest takeaway. Yeah. And I think some things we haven't shared about, like with, with our feature set, like is dynamic content. Like we, Nora talked about it a little bit, but like essentially you could send an ad to an entire feed, um, you know, that says, Hey, you know, come to the workshop or like, join me for this next thing. And it's a short ad spot that is timed and goes in at the front, just like every ad you hear in a podcast. So yeah, we, you're, you're basically allowing, you're meeting them at, a, at an app that people use very regularly, um, that a huge portion of the population listens to, you know, eight episodes or eight weekly shows. Um, and it's not a huge portion. I think like 30% of the population listens to at least um, eight hours of, of podcast content. So those people are really into audio and um, you can, you can support them um, with your content by having your content be in audio form. Yeah, I just, I mean, I- I, I do a lot of podcasts. I said, you know, the people are saying instead of podcasts now, they want to do, you know, podcasts as videos. So I, you know, yeah, you know, sure. it, it seems to be much more of a a mixing of the technologies. Absolutely, than- yeah, mm-hmm. definitely, cool. Um, okay, what else do we have? Questions coming. Ah, well, I mean, this is kind of related. Don't have a podcast player, but want to listen on their computer. The flip of that. Yeah, Yeah, you can, you can embed the episodes. Um, Each episode has a player link that you could send out and it has the show notes in that page. Um, You could put them on your own hosted site, embed the player on your own website, link to that, and people can listen on a browser on a computer. Um, If they have a Google account, Google Podcasts is a browser based player that works just fine. there's a few other desktop options, but if you just want to, if they're just comfortable visiting a link and going to a website and hitting play, yeah, you can use the embeddable players for those. And you can either put the show notes there yourself, or like I said, each episode's link has the show notes right under the player. Cool. Um, where... is, is there, let me ask it another, do, do you guys do anything to the audio or is just whatever audio is submitted? If you give us an MP3, we don't touch it. If you, you can upload videos or M4As or other audio file types, then we'll convert them to MP3. Um, we also have Dolby.io's audio improvement available. So it's a one click, just audio cleanup. So it'll make your voice sound great. Cut out the background noise, that kind of stuff. That's and optional. You don't have to do that for every episode, but you can. Do, do you adjust the volume for the way it's played or so that's consistent yeah that's what the dolby cleanup does normalizes all the voices so they're the same level and yeah cleans it up really nicely thank cool. you i think maybe maybe we should take the time to um let me see i forget what's next um i mean this is so fast but really the demo um so tools we recommend for recording um mic and headphones. You don't have to though. Um, we're big on using the old plug into your Apple, you know, podcast thing, recording voice memo, get in a closet works also fine. Um, but the, the mics we recommend are like 60 bucks. We're not, we're not recommending, you know, sure mics or anything (laughs) you can get fancy, but you don't have to. Yeah. Derek is fancy. (laughs) Um, we like Descript for editing for those of you who maybe aren't big podcasters or aren't really into editing and are worried about having to do that. Descript allows you to edit like you're editing a Google Doc. Um, I personally like using it and that has saved me a ton of time. And then of course, because we're a podcast hosting company, we do audio feeds um, and Hello Audio to distribute them and lots of the features um, that allow us to control the content and use it like a content creator. That's really who our market is. Yes, we have a lot of big time podcasters that use our our product, um, but we're also really big on making people who are not podcasters uh, get their content in podcast apps. So um, 
a couple quick testimonials. Uh, I was thinking that the demo was next. It's not. <laughs> um, you know, Alyssa Hall, she grew a list by 763% in nine days because she put a mini course that was not getting watched. Um, she recorded a couple of weeks prior um, and had four videos recorded and decided to put it in a podcast player instead. And uh, guess what happened? It basically started to get shared over a bunch of Facebook groups um, because it was such, uh, like Nora said, low... Um, uh, what did we, what did the word we use? Low pressure. Low pressure, right? Like, oh my gosh, I'm signing up for this giant course of videos that I have to watch. Like, oh wait, I don't have to watch anything and it's just a podcast. Great. Um, and so it, it basically blew up. That was a, a year ago or so. Kathy Borden's out of our, um, audio course accelerator. So she's a run coach, which is such a great niche for audio. Again, they don't want to look at videos. Um, they want to take you on a run and she created a seven week course. And in four hours was able to repurpose that content. Um, and she had a sick kid and her husband was out of town. <laughs> she's like, if I had to record videos, this wouldn't have happened. And she was able to make $3,300 from her old course content that she had. Um, we, um, aside for what we shared in your feed that you guys have now, if you want to experience what it's like to sign up for a feed, we have our uh, Hello Audio Success Stories. It has about 45 real business owners like you sharing exactly how they used audio in their business. Um, short definitely less than 10 minute episodes. Some of them are, you know, five minute episodes. Um, you got a taste of them inside the workshop series feed. So if you subscribe to the workshop series feed, you'll see, I think I dropped like four or five that were kind of relative to, um, this content. So you can go to go.helloaudio.fm forward slash success stories. I think if you just type in success, I think it also directs to that. It'll redirect. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm which is cool. Okay. So this is what I wanted to get to. Um, I wasn't really realizing um, how far away we were from it. Derek was going to do a really quick demo, just so you can see the inside of Hello Audio, um, what it looks like. Um, and we also will still open um, for coaching after as well. There's no... Um, don't worry about that. So if you, if you stick around, we're still, we can still talk about your business as well. Derek, I think I have to stop sharing. Go for it. Speed demo. Let's Speed see. demo. <laughs> I mean, you'll see uh, how quick it, it is to get going. Yeah. So I, I'm going to make a feed very fast, show you what it looks like for the listener. And then, um, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to create a private feed. This is a workshop demo. And make some basic decisions like add my name, put in my website. So you could drop a link to your website or, you know, if it is a course a place for students to log in, some apps show this and let them click to view it. And we do have somebody, I can't remember, is this called the last ask about expiration, but you could expire the feed for listeners if you'd like. Um, you can set up some custom colors if you would like. And let me go ahead and drop an image that I have saved here. So I have some stuff on my computer, files on my desktop. I'm just going to drag them in and build the feed from there. So the, the starting point is a picture for the feed cover art and then some media video we can convert them to audio if it's uh, not an mp3 we'll turn it into an empty mp3 you could drop files from like a whatsapp chat uh, what's that other app that people use for chatting um telegram has audio messaging some people take group calls from there like they chat with people and then put them in a feed so any any media file type audio and video will convert to mp3 I dragged and dropped just three quick video or three quick media files. So a Zoom recording is an M4A. I have an MP3 file and an MP4. They're getting converted to MP3 if they're not already. This is probably already done. It's a quick 20 second video um, converted, ready to go. So I can change this to be like, oh, this is my welcome episode. Um, let me go ahead and so this is where you would put show notes, links, whatever you'd like. I'll go ahead and publish it. Again, speed building, speed building. Um, the way we organize a feed, you could put it by date, like this is today's episode and then schedule the one for next week. Or if it's a course just ready to binge, you could put everything in one feed, drag them to the right place. Like that's my welcome episode, it belongs at the top. I'm gonna publish these other ones without making changes to them. And the feed is now ready with three episodes. And so what you could do is set up a page to add listeners, or you could come in here and add them yourself. So if I just put in my own email address, 
send an introductory email. You can customize it or just send the default text you see here, which is fine for me. I'm gonna hit add. And then if I swing over to my inbox, I should have an email that just arrived saying your audio access workshop demo call. Start listening and then they could pick their podcast app. And it changes based on the device. If I was on Android, there would be specific Android devices here. On desktop, we'll show Apple because it does work on the computer. Google is an easy one because it's in the browser. So it'll ask if you want to subscribe in Google and it'll be in my Google podcast account, but nobody else's unless they're an added listener to this feed. They can't search for and find this podcast that I just created. And then like I set up, welcome episode at the top, the others down below, I can hit play. And there it is, that's the subscription. And not only that, that's adding somebody, but if you wanted to, um, I should see myself as invited. And then if I refresh the page, now that I've actually put it in an app, I've subscribed, I can turn off individual listeners access. And then if they try and play something, they'll get an error. They, don't, they no longer have access to that content. So that's adding a listener, the listener getting an email, subscribing to that email, getting it in an app, and then the next step, if they leave the program or something like that, a membership, they end their membership, you can cancel their access to the audio content. Cool? So like I said, speed feed creation. That was good. I think that was the best one yet. There's so many features where I'm like, oh, yeah, we do I that. Know. I see it. And it's like, oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so really quickly, just because we're coming up on the hour, we have um, about five minutes left. I don't want to forget to to make this for you guys. Like Nora and I said, we're not asking you to buy a $997 course and you get Hello Audio for free. Not a thing. Um, but if you are a new Hello Audio user or you're joining us and you want to upgrade, um, we do have a 10% off code that will last last as long as you're a paying customer. So it is like for life, if you will. Um, the code is hello 10. So when you go to sign up, um, and you go to the billing page and select your plan, there's a code, uh, that, uh, a coupon code that you can drop in and you'll get 10% off. Um, so we just wanted to thank you guys for coming today and, and listening to us chat about audio, um, and obviously sharing your businesses with us as well. So code is hello 10. Derek could probably drop the link to sign up. Cool. Um, so yeah, so now we wanted to, um, and we could go a little over, I think, um, I don't know, Norik, how are you? <laughs> I'm good for a little good. bit. Yeah. yeah. I'm looking at the clock and I was like, as long as I get in that carpool lane. Totally. <laughs> it's fine. Yeah. It's fine. I will say this too. Um, with our software, we purposely decided not to require credit cards to do a trial. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's um, a good you could just check it out for seven days, just play around, create a feed, um, you know, see, just kind of see what it's like. And I know we went pretty fast on that demo. I will say, um, I'm a pretty tech savvy person. Um, and so this like, but, but a lot of our users aren't. And so the fact that we have over 70% of our user base that has created their first feed in less than a day is a big, that's, that's a, that's a statistic that most SaaS companies don't have. Most SaaS companies, it, their, their time to value is that metric, right? When we look at SaaS products and their time before their user base gets value out of it or can launch something is usually a lot longer than a day. And usually the other 30% of our users are like, damn it, I wish I would have known that this was so easy. I would have done it. I would just assumed it was difficult, right? So yeah. um, I think that's a big thing that's important to us. We want to make sure, you know, as business owners ourselves, um, we don't need tech headaches. We have had plenty of those um, over the four, you know, over the course of the last several years. And so we we purposely built this product to be easy and to enable people who are not tech savvy to be able to do this. I mean, my kids, I have teenagers and they they can create feeds and publish it. So um, it's just it's it's a lot. Um, easier than you might expect. And so that's why we we wanted to give you those seven days to to really check it out and play with it for yourself. Yeah. Hey, Lindsay. Yeah. In yours. Uh, my yeah. name is Ronald Shepherd. It's my wife, Janda. We were invited on by a good friend of ours. I think that's him with the iPad too there, George. Uh, <laughs> we're basically newbies to podcasts. Uh, my son, who's a creative director at a university here in Texas, Laterno University, I'll go ahead and mention, he's no longer there. He's like Paul. He freelance. He has his own business now. And every now and then I hear him say, Dad, I was on a podcast. Dad, I was on a podcast. And I'm looking at him like, what is he talking about? <laughs> podcast, Dad. I got some great information from a podcast. And it's like, Phew. and so most of the information 
that you guys were talking about today, to be honest, was going over our head. But mm-hmm. some of the things you were saying were very interesting. We're in ministry, have been for 40 mm-hmm. years, but we're also in the health and wellness space. Uh, mm-hmm. We do a lot with mentoring married couples and things like that. So a lot of the things we've heard yeah. are very interesting, but it's like you've given us the keys to potentially a Ferrari. We need to know where the start button is. <laughs> yeah. How to open the door to get in the seat to even start driving. And yeah. so I know the meeting's about to end. We'll probably talk to him and then follow up. What's the best way to correspond with you guys after today? Oh, that's a great question. Uh, well, also welcome. And like, it sounds yeah. like your son great too to might be able to help you out. Those sons can help with tech. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, and also I want to say there is a lot of folks um, kind of in the ministry space, in the relationship space. We have people that run feeds that um, allow to download like two products, uh, sorry, two devices to be um uh, signed up for per feed. So, uh, uh, partners can sign up. So we see a lot of that. And I think, especially with just that intimate type of, of niche, you know, and so, um, I just want you to know that there are lots of folks that are using Hello Audio in a similar way. So, um, we just got to get you over that hurdle and, and it, it truly is easier than you think. And I think it's, um, you know, hopefully we can help with some of that really basic stuff. So this is a great way to talk about kind of some of the other things. So we, d- we have a Facebook group. That's a really great way to connect with other people. If you post there and ask like, who's in this space and I'll like, look back and see who I know and tag them. And and they might be able to help you just from a perspective of serving the same niche. Um, so the Facebook group is big. The newsletters I'm, I'm keep promoting there. We drop them every Monday, make sure you get them uh, because it has like everything we're doing. If we're doing a new event, um, you know, latest, you know, things like case studies, we share, you know, lots of stuff. Um, so the newsletter is a great way. You could always hit reply on every and any email that we send as far as getting contact from us. And then we do these workshops monthly. It'll be a new topic every month. This was a very like kind of broad topic. We're going to do some broad and we'll do some like maybe we'll focus entirely on challenges and we'll do a workshop on teaching the best way to. And that's going to be like more like teaching kind of ways. Um, so these workshops and then we have coaching calls monthly. So in two weeks weeks is our next coaching call. It's same time. Um, so it's first Wednesday, our, our workshops and third Wednesdays are coaching. And that's where you could come and we can answer like any question, super beginner. Um, even like we're doing today, it'll, it'll, it'll entirely be questions and answers. And so that's like a whole dedicated hour plus of coaching and not teaching. Um, and I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I mean, those are the main, and then Derek, any, like, if you do, just, you know, take the plunge and just go, you know what, I'm just going to give it a shot. And I'm going to click around. That's always what I advise people to do. What, like, go try stuff. If you do that and you get stuck in support, Derek is, uh, runs our support inbox right now. Um, we will link you to appropriate videos and help docs. If you're getting stuck with things, I mean, he can troubleshoot, send a loom. Um, you know, he's, he's really done it all, um, from, a being able to help people perspective. I don't know, Derek, if you have like a starting point when people message you that yeah. kind of question, I would say, so Lizzie said, just, if you want to just get in and poke around, totally cool. Don't be afraid. Some people stop because they're like, I'm going to hit publish. And then all of a sudden everyone can have access to my, you know, ex- exclusive content. There's not a way to do that. It's not just going to all of a sudden leak to like everyone in the world. So <laughs> do feel free to just create stuff and try stuff. And it's not going to be like, oh no, it's now on the front page of New York times. It's not going to happen. So <laughs> which would be cool. <laughs> it would be cool if we could do that, but that's not how it works. Um, so, yeah. so I know some people get frozen because of that, because they're like, I'm yeah. afraid to hit publish on something, but don't, don't worry about that. And yeah, if you have any questions, you can write into us at support. And it's usually me, um, answering the emails. And, um, if you sign up for an account, there's a quick guide, quick start guide that gets sent as well. Um, okay, but the cool. Facebook group is a great place just to like test the waters and, and ask questions and just observe, see what people are talking about. Okay. I think can you, you give us the link to the Facebook group? Yeah, I'm getting that. I think Nora just dropped it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Hello, Hello audio audio. Dot community. All right. Thank you, guys. Mm-hmm. Yay. Yeah, you're, definitely you're welcome. tag us. Tag us in the group. We're in there. We're happy to answer any questions that, mm-hmm. that we can. Because it's, I don't know, this is really cool from 
when we get to enable you to deliver your message to more people, mm -hmm. I think what that's the bit, I know I'm not going to speak, but I have a feeling because we've had meetings and we've talked about this. When we see everyone getting their knowledge, their know-how, their expertise out there and they're changing lives, like that makes us super happy. So if we can do anything to get you started, well, we're happy to help. Cool. Hi, guys. Hi it's Mike. Hi, Mike. Yeah, Hi you, you might have had a couple of questions we didn't get to, so go for it. The one that really is, I have friends who just don't want to go online. They don't want to have a podcast feed or they, they just don't want to do that. They're fine to sit on their computers and be on Facebook, but they want to listen to audio on their computer. So I realize that we can send just a link, but you know that link is just like a link. And some people might not know. Can you embed into an email like you would embed into a website so you actually see a visual? You know what I mean? No. Um, the email apps strip out the embedded players. I think Apple Mail might play Spotify embedded players. That's it that I'm aware of. Um, but like Gmail will not show an embedded player inside of an email. It's just a link. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Some people put like a screenshot of the player and then they click it thinking it's going to play and it goes to the website. So like tricks them into going to the place you want them to. But no, you can't just put a player in an email. And they can read the show notes there as well. Like that'll be available mm -hmm. to them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. That's the main thing I want to know. Thank you guys. Mm -hmm. Appreciate cool. it. It's been great. Awesome. Thanks. Yeah. And a lot of times we have users, I don't, if you're tech savvy and your audience isn't like, um, they, you can record your phone of the sign up process. So do kind of what Derek did in the demo and have it set. And you essentially like show the email that they're going to receive, show you clicking, show the different podcast players, definitely show them if they don't see their podcast player, um, just to have that on hand. And, and then you can send that video then to any person writing in asking about how to access the feed and you could do a desktop version and you could do a phone version. And usually if you just kind of save that, you know, in, in whatever type of system that you're saving those kind of things, then, um, whenever someone writes in from a help perspective, like, I don't know where this is, you have it going there or in the onboarding of whatever your product is a, a quick video that usually helps people when they can physically see it. Cool. Is there any other questions that we missed? Paul, oh, ACA, is our ACA course still open? We're... <laughs> No, it's over. It just ended. It's live. Um, we're going to release an on-demand version. Um, so if you do want to create an audio course, um, the on-demand version, we're working on it. That's actually on our agenda in February. Um, the first people that will ever find out about it, it will probably be announced in the Facebook group and will probably be sent out in the newsletter um, when that link is ready. And then, um, it, yeah, so... We'll get that. We'll get that to you. I would say um, I, we have a track with audio. So we have, oh, yeah. we have a $17, yeah. like a, a smaller course about that's lead on magnets. demand right now about lead magnets. Um, we really enjoy doing those, the accelerator, the audio course, because it's just fun to do coaching and to see people and interact live um, with folks. So we'll probably, we'll look at, um, I think we are going to do an attract with the audio uh, live um, we'll probably do ACA, the audio course accelerator again, just because it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Monica's question, the template Amy used for her audio course, where does one get that? And the feed is unsearchable naps. Yeah. So when you, when you create a private feed, as you saw Derek do at the very beginning, there's private and public, public would be searchable, private, totally not searchable. They can, they cannot find that. Um, then the template Amy used for her audio course. I don't know about the template that I, if so Amy offered it as a supplement. Um, so has video has beautiful videos, <laughs> um, has very well put together courses and products. And she offers us the supplement of the audio feed for her students. When she runs it live, I believe she drops the episodes, um, for that week's content towards the end, um, as a way to say, Hey, this is how you can catch up. So she, she drives people to odd to the video first. She wants the video to be consumed. And then she gives them the audio option as a way to catch up. Um, and you know, tell them they're not behind. So there's no real template for that. That's just, you know, and as a teacher, you can decide how to set it up yourself. Um, whether you want to hold back content, um, from, 
the audio perspective or just give it to them up front. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else related to audio course template. If there, if there's a different question or a different way of phrasing it, Monica, let me know. Natalie, uh, free and paid audio newsletters. More on that. Okay. And then, and then I see also Bruce has his hand up. So let me answer Natalie's question quick and then we'll, we'll get to Bruce. Um, so yeah, free and paid audio newsletters. Um, the, uh, anything else I can add to it. So yeah, Tarzan K is the person who has, she's an email. She actually teaches copywriting. I think she's on hold with teaching that right now, but, um, taught copywriting and email writing. And so she has, she wrote like several times a week and she's really funny as well. And so she decided to record exactly what she sent out in email. And, um, I think the podcast is called Tarzan K reads her emails. <laughs> and so at the bottom, she made a graphic and it's like, if you'd rather listen to this click here. And so, um, then that allows, you know, people, her audience who like listening to her or sorry, getting her content, listen to it instead. And then, you know, archive and not have the other stuff come to her inbox. Cause that, you know, inboxes are crazy. And so, and she's cool because what's cool. I think if you've ever listened to somebody read an audio book, you get extra stuff because they tend to be like, Oh yeah. Like they do like side notes and stuff. And so, um, it's very similar with newsletter writing or with anything. If you write a blog or you're reading, you know, um, a PDF you've created, you can kind of make the audio version sound like more interesting because you can say like, oh, I have extra body, uh, audio content, bonus audio content that isn't in the book or isn't in the, you know, newsletter or email. And so, um, the audio version of the newsletter from a free perspective, that's just like giving them the option. Hey, right. Like here's the newsletter. You could totally position it as paid. Um, you can kind of take the Substack route while Substack is obviously designed for newsletters. They do have a podcast integration or whatever it's called. They do, they will let you create podcasts of your content. Um, you are set to their, what their kind of system is. And we're, we kind of are open. We're more open from the creator perspective of what you can do with it. And so you could charge a hundred dollars for past archives. If you want it, you could charge, you know, $5 a month for access to the audio versions of your newsletter. And people will pay that because they're paying for convenience. As many podcasters know, people will pay to not have to hear ads. People will pay, you know, people will pay for lots of reasons. And so if you think that your audience would be, would want to pay for a newsletter that's read to them instead of in their inbox, you could easily position it as a paid uh, feature. I wouldn't say it's like a lot of money, but <laughs> you could, you know, position it as paid. It might be something that you add maybe a little extra um, uh, content there that would make them want paid. But I don't know if we've, I, I don't know of anyone that's doing a paid newsletter right now. I know that they work because we know Substack works. So um, it's not a question of whether or not people are doing it. Um, I think from what most of our users are doing in, in, in the marketing space, they're offering the audio version of their newsletter for free, typically. Monica talking about an audio only course. Is this from Amy? Are, are you talking about her mindset thing she did prior to her launch of DCA in like September? Is that what you're talking about? Or is it something else? Um, yeah. So we don't have a template. Like Amy just uses our product to deliver um, audio versions of content. And um, so we don't necessarily have a template, but we teach in ACA a way to design audio courses. Okay, cool. Bruce. The, uh, yeah, there you go. All right, can you hear me? Yep. All right. Yeah, well, first of all, I think um, I think this is brilliant. Again, oh, good. Let's come up with yeah, because well, I guess you can see between trying to do the slide decks and the, the videos and stuff, uh, I lost some hair, you know, and, and then the process. <laughs> right. <laughs> in the process, yeah, but I, I, I tell you, I think it's excellent. And I just have one question here. Is it necessary to have um, a website? I mean, I thought maybe mm -hmm. they said that the only, uh, well, stupid question is the one that's not asked. And I just kind of thought that, you know, because I'm also, well, I'm a minister and I'm a 
you know, and into the you know ministerial space. I believe it's, it's, it's so much needed right now. Mm -hmm. And I think this would be very key because like I said, they can listen on the go. They just don't have to sit down. You know, a lot of folks just don't, you know, I mean, sure, some would like to see, you know, would like to see people, you know, and, and to go over different things. But when you, I think it's more on, uh, it's more embedded in mm -hmm. the sense. When, you know, when you're, when you're listening, you know, and it's, and it's, it's with you. And it's yep. not slowing you down, mm -hmm. you know, it's not yep. stopping you. You don't have to come to a, a standstill, so to speak. You know, yes. you can be moving along, doing what you're doing, but it's just with you. And I believe it's just playing within you. Mm. You, know, you're, you know, you're hearing that. And um, I thought it was excellent. I, I was like, wow, that's the man. They, they took my taking it out of the box. They just went completely, you know, into another, uh, you know, stratosphere. <laughs> oh, just, because when you laid out, you know, when you laid out the statistics, you know, with all of the, the video, you know, and all that stuff. And that's true. I, I, don't, I don't scroll through so many things. It's like, I'm not reading that. I mean, <laughs> you know, yeah. just much stuff just going down and going. And then everybody's just got, and then even, like you said, with the podcast space, you know what I mean? The public ones, there's tons of them on there. Tons. Yeah. It's just tons of them on there. And the, and to have this, I think this is a more intimate space. You know, it's, it's a yeah. more intimate space and, it, and it's a more direct and, and folks really want, doesn't feel in a sense more violated, if you will. <laughs> but I, I think it's excellent. But the question the question was though, do I really um, actually need a, a website? I was thinking about targeting in both areas for those who wanted to learn you know, by watching a visual. And for those, you know, I want to kind of, uh, what well, you know, kind of corn off the market, if you will, or just kind of give them an option, if you, you know, if you will. Yep. You don't but I think need what you guys one. Are doing yeah, I mean, thank you for the saying that. That's awesome. I, you don't need a website. So what we didn't do, one of the things that I'm still working on is updating our own website because we've been so busy putting together content. Um, we Hello Audio just recently, within the last few months, we announced that we have a built-in cart functionality as well. So it's, you know, it directly will integrate, you can create a Stripe account and you can, so if you're doing paid stuff, um, you can do all of that without needing any other tools. And if you're just offering something for free, you can use that page as, um, you know, the price would be zero, but it would just be that opt-in page. So you don't have to worry about landing page software or anything else. I will say one of the things I have been working on and one of the reasons I haven't updated our website yet um, is because I've been um, creating templates in Canva for our users. So it's something that I'd like to, to do a workshop for in the future. Canva recently announced their ability to create websites. So if you're familiar with Canva, it's like a graphic design software. It's, it's been really popular. We've been, um, I spent a lot of hours <laughs> creating uh, a landing page for selling an audio course um, specifically to be used with Canva. And it's purposely designed for a free Canva account. So you're not having to spend additional money on anything like another tool or anything, um, but it, it is an option. So there are other alternatives and easier ways to create like a landing page or to even create a basic website that can help promote your audio and that could link directly to that Hello Audio built-in page to either check out um, and give you money if you're doing a paid um, asset or a paid product or just opt in and give you their email address if you're making it a free product. So um, you don't need one. You definitely don't need one to get started. It's a lot more important to get your voice out there and to share what you have with people who need it. Um, could you evolve over time and can you use tools like Canva and templates that we're hoping to provide to our user base to make it even easier? Absolutely. You can. We can explore. There are options where you don't have to be super tech savvy, but you could still have really sharp looking landing pages that will help you with more conversions and more opt-ins if, if that's something you'd like to do. Yeah, well, definitely. I um, I have a pro account with um, Cam. Oh, cool. Oh, yeah, like same. Yeah, like one of my yeah, same. go-to <laughs> softwares, yeah. One last thing, the, um, I had my, my, uh, my wife uh, of 19 years passed away like oh. nine months ago. Oh. And I'm so sorry. They took my, yeah, they took my uh, brother in, I think it was like four weeks ago, I said he wasn't, wasn't really feeling well and so forth. And 
Uh, they took me to the hospital. You know, they looked him over. They came out and um, gave him uh, two weeks to live. Oh, my gosh. I get from a cancer. Yeah, a very aggressive cancer. So we just, um, we actually just buried him uh, this Saturday just passed. So the thing was, is that I would listen to this podcast, uh, you know, the guys was talking about out of all the people, you know, the spouses and stuff that had passed away and so forth, but they, they didn't have an answer, okay? They didn't provide an answer, so to speak. So um, I was working on a podcast now called The, uh, the, the Intimacy of uh, Understanding the Intimacy of Death but being comforted above receiving comfort from the giver of life. Mm -hmm. So, it, it, you know, it's the, the, the comfort end up because see, I didn't really realize and understand how much a, a comfort and a relationship, okay, with God meant. I'm, 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 I'm actually um, understanding this in real time. You know, and so we're gonna really gonna dig into that, and this uh, that is really excellent. I think it'll help tons of people because a lot of people are not really confused. I mean, they're they're confused, they're mad, they're shaking their fists at God. You know what I mean? And it's in the oh my goodness, this, that, and the other, and even on down to pet owners. There's a lot of folks, you know, that, that are losing pets that are yeah. you know really devastating. Yeah. You know, behind yeah. it though. But those are some things, you know, some projects that I want to, you know, to want to work on. But I, I'll say this again: when I first uh, seen your um, your advertisement on Facebook, I said, "You gotta be kidding me!" I said, "Are you serious?" I said, "This is just what I was looking for." I said, "This is <laughs> everything else in the war chamber." I yeah. Said, oh, I'm I just so glad. Thank you so much once again. I don't want to take up all the time. <laughs> No, we appreciate you. Thanks for showing up and um, yeah, taking the taking the risk of showing up to something like this. Always like some random yeah. lady on the internet these told me people. To, <laughs> yeah. these people. We're glad you're here. Um, cool. Thank you, yeah. Thank you. Um, awesome. So I think I think we have to cap it. Um, if yeah, so this will end up in our our feed that is around the workshop series, and every month we're going to add. So since you joined for this first workshop, you can listen in to all of them. You can come live again like this, um, but we will be dropping the recording. Um, and you know, we'd love to have you guys in the other places that we hang out. I think this was stuff we dropped later or earlier. So. Um, really appreciate you guys for showing up live. I know that that is not an easy feat as much as we talk about audio and replays. For those yeah. of you who came live, we really appreciate you. Um, and again, don't forget to use the code HELLO10 if you do decide to join us on Hello Audio and get your message out there. And yeah, thanks for coming. And maybe we'll see you next month. All right. Yeah, and don't Take wait. Care. Don't wait a month. Don't wait a month. There you go. Tag us in the Facebook group. Hit us up whatever yeah. you need. We're here for you. Cool. Okay, well, thank, thank you, so everyone. Thank you so awesome. Thanks, everyone. Take Great care. to meet you.